Anglo-American and its platinum division, together with Kumba Iron Ore, posted uh, growth in resources production for the second quarter. Results a bit mixed, but uh, earnings from the group are expected to be released on the 26th of this month. New CEO Mark Curifani will uh, no doubt be giving, or hopefully giving his shareholders and legions of supporters some good news. Joining us now to unpack the mining and resource space, and particularly those Anglo production figures, Bevan Jones with Tebe Investment Corporation. Bevan, I mean, this is uh, meat and potatoes to you, I guess. Every quarter, Anglo and many of the other big resources companies give us an, un, uh, an insight into how production is going. How do you read yeah. them at first glance? I think, you, you, you know, when you look at the, sh the shares and you, and, you, and you read their production reports, that's always historically looking back over the last year. But you have the forward curve in, in, in trading the underlying iron ore price, for instance, um, and that gives you some indication of what traders are thinking about, about the future. And, you know, not only has Anglo obviously posted a decent production increases, but you're seeing it with BHP, you're seeing it with Rio Tinto, etc. And that's why you've, you've seen largely the iron ore prices dropped quite significantly. We went from over $130 right down to $100 and back up now to about $120 odd dollars. Um, so the story in iron ore is, is, is unfortunately that all this excess of production is, is, is coming into the market and then combine that with weak Chinese demand, etc. Um, you know, stainless steel outlook not that great. Um, it's not a great pi picture going forward. But um, having said that, historically the iron ore prices have been far better than the last sort of five years or so. So they are able to at least capture some of that. But it's interesting to see the way the market reacted to these numbers. Anglo itself, the top company, up one and a half percent. Kumba, down about half a percent, and then Anglo Platinum down one percent. So those are the three, mm. uh, if you like, within the stable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, legs to this uh, to the Anglo um, stool. Did that surprise you, or was it just kind of a, a, a gut reaction? I think I don't. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't follow the shares that closely. I look more at the sort of underlying commodities themselves. Mm -hmm. But I guess you know maybe the market knows something about their hedging strategy, for instance. And and, and Kumba obviously, Kumba has a very high grade of, of iron ore. It's possible it's a 64% iron ore versus the benchmark 62% grade. So they always tend to get better prices in the market. But the market knows that, and and also Kumba, you know, t tends to sell most of their product through a Max Steel subsidiary in in Japan, and. Um, a, a lot of it on forward contracts, etc. Whereas perhaps, um, you know, obviously platinum is, is, is much more of a spot market. So Anglo Platinum is going to rise and fall very much in line with what the platinum price is doing. You know, I'd be keen to get your take, Bevan, on, on the cash operating costs, which were at 5% at Amplats in the quarter. You know, we're bubbling under 17,000 rand mm. an ounce now. Mm. And, uh, it, it, you know, it just, the, the whole industry has been caught in this price rise paradigm for years now yeah. and uh, any thoughts on that as to how you get out of that ratcheting up mechanism which which you know that the, the rent can't bail you out forever in the day no no and you you hope that the rent weakens more and more but it <laughs> um, no I think I think any any pl any deep level platinum and, and gold miner at the moment is, is is seriously reconsidering their mechanization strategy and and obviously with the labor negotiations going on at the moment, that is a, a, a bit of a, uh -huh. a, a sort of an axe that they can wield, unfortunately. But then again, they have to play the game. Um, you know, you can't go out there and make these sort of threats of closing shafts, etc. You've got to be seen to be doing the right thing for the country, etc. The costs are, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Costs are going to increase. Unfortunately, our costs seem to be increasing faster mm. than our competitors, where it's easier to mine. Uh, you know, iron ore in Australia or, or gold in, in um, the Gin New Guinea or wherever. So, so yeah, it's, it is a big concern and obviously, you know, coal became our, our biggest uh, GDP earner last year and uh, took over platinum, etc. And unfortunately, I think that's the case. Coal, far easier to mine. Um, but again, it has its own set uh, cost base, which is also ratcheting up very mm -hmm. fast. And, and the future of coal seems to be a little bit of a dead duck, unfortunately. Just to be company specific, Kirifani has got a lot of fans. Uh, he's regarded by people in the industry as the best miner uh, in this country, or the best, certainly the best mining CEO. Do you think he's going to uh, reveal something special on the 26th? I think he's he's certainly had the timing perfect. I mean, you know, he was able to unbundle, you know, in terms of Anglo Gold Ashanti, etc. And 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 having joined Anglo just at a perfect time before the gold price collapsed, etc. Um, I think I think he, he has to be looking at cost cutting across the board and and perhaps 
maybe a realignment of, of commodities. Um, I, I think you'll find probably thermal coal um, might come under a bit of pressure. Um, but if I was him, I'd certainly be looking at, at, at sort of bedding down the platinum um, within, the, the, within the business because long term that has to stage a recovery. Um, I'm certainly more bullish long term on platinum than I am on thermal coal, for instance. A little related to this, Mark, as we go back to the markets generally, AACI uh, brought out a um, update today, a trading yeah. update. Did you have a chance to look at it? Yeah, it's a company I've followed quite closely and been favourably disposed to. And, and you might wonder, yes, yeah, exposed to mining. Their mining side is doing pretty well, yeah. the, the uh, sort of explosives. So very, there'll be a very good first half, you know, th you've got to strip out some numbers, but I estimate they'll be up over 40% of the earnings level and comfortably over 20% for the year. And they're growing abroad. Mm. Uh, the, is it in the price, though, this, this spectacular increase that they're going to yeah, be showing for the uh, first half? We, we've, uh, we've seen that price. It was languishing for quite some time, Alec. And then it's been moving very nicely now from around about the 80 rand level, stuck there, and now it's around about the 120 level. And I've had a target price of about 125 for a good few months now. Mm -hmm. So we, we've started to see it come through as people get a bit of comfort. I think because there's a mining connotation to it, people run a bit scared. But you know, there, this is actually a good industrial way to get exposure indirectly to mining. And of course the property. They've been talking about selling off yeah. all that Mordefontaine property. which now could That's be about 17 rand a share if you value it. The that's property, about 17 the property size, mm -hmm. about 2 billion if you just take the, uh, the, the Ha Teng property uh, assets, uh, Mordefontaine. Uh, that would uh, yield about 2 billion rand. Before we leave today, this, this decline in the ShopRite share price, has it hit a bottom yet? We I did say in, initially yes. it's priced, it was priced for perfection, but another 3% today, at some point in time, you've got to, you've got to believe that it's, it's good value. The, these stocks are struggling, Alec, to get a bit weaker. And a part of that is the over-owning, uh, if you will, by foreign investors in a, in a number of these stocks. Um, at MassMart we obviously know about. But a number of these companies have very large foreign shareholdings. Sometimes it's over 50%. So that's tending to put a bit of a lid on the selling. But there's still scope for it to weaken. And MassMart is a good example coming from over 200 rand, slipping down closer to 165, which has been my fair value for quite some time.